we are. So here we are at the Biosphere 2. If you haven't heard of it, it was an experiment back in the 90s. And Biosphere 2 means the Earth. So, or Earth number two. So, let's go check it out. Hopefully we, we can get some good footage. Time to start the tour. Time to start, let's go. I should talk about this. Let me talk about this. So, before they used to sell three separate tours for here, but now they've all combined it into one self guided tour that you download an app for and walk around. So, uh, let's do it. <laughs> Those buildings with the broken panels on the roof are the original buildings from the first experiment. Biosphere Ventures purchased this property and they started to build it out. Over here you can see the okay. test module, which was used as a prototype prior to building Biosphere 2. You started it over. Next to that are the greenhouses that they used to quarantine plants and animals prior to putting them inside the facility. And then the analytical lab, which is where they used stored instrumentation and took water and soil samples. And then directly behind me here in the arch building is the former mission control. This is where people monitored everything happening inside the biosphere and lived with biosphere. They told us a lot more when we were here, like these are the student rooms and they still use them. Oh, look, guest laundry. I think they rent these out too, don't they? I don't think so. You can so. stay here. I, cool. I don't remember that part. But maybe. It is cool. Oh, yeah, that is cool. Yeah. There's some artwork. Rainwater harvesting. They must not be harvesting much rainwater because I don't think it rains much anymore. It's been pretty dry. It doesn't feel like it's raining. They replaced the tour guys with robots, in a sense. Videos. Yeah. In 1987, they broke ground for bias for two. What's remarkable is it only took them four years to build this over three acre facility, complete with a tropical rainforest, an ocean, a savanna, a marsh, a desert, an agricultural area, and a living quarters. Just like our houses, they had complete kitchen, dining area, apartments, bathrooms, workout facilities. In doing so, they created an environment that they hoped they would be able to live inside. And they successfully did for two years. Now, they faced some challenges, as one might expect. Just like anybody who's confined in spaces, they face social and psychological challenges. The farm area wasn't as productive as they hoped and did not give them adequate calories, although they were okay from a nutritional standpoint. And one of the big challenges they faced is that the very rich soils they put in the rainforest and in the former farm area supported a very diverse and abundant microbial communities. Those microbes are just like you and I. They take in oxygen, they give off CO2. Well, it was that respiration that outpaced plant photosynthesis. Remember, photosynthesis takes in CO2, water, splits it, and gives off oxygen, which we use to breathe. Well, that balance wasn't quite right inside Biosphere 2, down to nearly 14.2%. Outside is 21% inside Biosphere 2 at about five, the day 500 of this two-year mission. They ended up, because they felt that it was needed for the safety of the Biospherians, adding oxygen into the system. In doing so, though, one of the big mistakes, in my opinion, was they were not forthcoming with this. And in fact, they did not tell the public that they had to do so. And it, this was a project that was so widely and highly publicized. They had to retract some statements. And we all know what happens when you do those types of things. It's very difficult to recover. And as a result, they lost tremendous amounts of credibility, not only with the scientific community, but with the media and the public. 
but they did successfully complete the two-year mission. They had a short intermission, and then another group, this time of seven versus eight, were sealed inside Biosphere 2, but only for about six months. It was at this time that the original ownership group decided that they were going to transition the facility away from a human habitation experiment and more towards an earth and environmental science experiment with the help of Columbia University. So they began a partnership with Columbia University. Columbia University officially took over management in January of 1996 and began to build out and repurpose Biosphere 2 so it could be used more formally as an earth and environmental science laboratory. About seven years into Columbia University's tenure, there was a decision made because of an administration change at Columbia University that they were no longer going to continue management of this remarkable facility. In 2007, the University of Arizona assumed management of Biosphere 2 and eventual ownership in 2011. Mm -hmm. The reason that the University of Arizona was interested in taking over this facility is because there are research questions that we can answer here that we can't answer anywhere else. Inside Biosphere 2, we have a fully established tropical rainforest, the world's largest experimental ocean, and a massive earth science research project called LEO, the Landscape Evolution Observatory. As you tour today, you will learn more about the research going on in each of those areas. cool biome and probably one of my most favorite biomes of everything inside Biosphere 2. It was originally designed after an area that you'd find in the Amazon basin. It is complete with a waterfall, a stream, a pond. It actually has a mountain in the center of it. What you can't see from here is there is actually plants that grow nearly 91 feet tall inside the structure. They're pushing out against it. In fact, our biome managers have to get in there regularly and use the lattice work of Biosphere 2 to climb to the top and trim those trees. Now, not only is it a cool biome, but it's an extremely useful and unique biome. Now, initially, when they planted this system, they started out with over 400 species, and they anticipated that there would be a species loss, and they had hoped when the system stabilized, they would still have a very diverse community. So today, we have nearly 98 species inside and a very diverse community. That allows us to do research that we can't do anywhere else in the world. We can rain in this rainforest, which means we can turn that rain off. We can crank up the temperature to look at how the system responds to an increase or a decrease in temperature, and we can change the gas composition, just like that that's happening right here on Earth, to look at how this system responds to allow our scientists to be able to better understand those implications before they happen. My phone is getting so hot. <laughs> I think it's 108 or 110 out right now. What you're looking at here is the human habitat. This is where the Biosterians had their apartments, their kitchen, and some of their laboratories. At the very top here is the library. This provided them a 360 degree view of the horizon. The Biosterians rarely use the library due to the long spiral staircase that it took to get up to the top. Over here is the original airlock door. This is where the Biosphereans entered and exited the facility. You will be entering here today. Such a big deal out of that last time we were here. They spent so much money on that soil simulation thing. Yeah. It's gonna help okay. the world. Record here. <laughs> okay, so our GoPro keeps dying. So we're gonna have to shut it off. So you're not gonna get all the walkthroughs. But uh, we're entering look, what looks like the desert. Why does the GoPro keep dying, sweetheart? Because it's too hot! <laughs> this feels like desert. Not, not much. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the first of the five biomes, like you said. So just go through here and then continue up the steps, and you'll end up coming out the rainforest. 
and then just take a left down the rainforest exit and I'll take you back up the steps. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Cooler in here than it is outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think. I'll be back. I'll be back. No, there was no number. There was one. Up there, I'll start it early. So on the southern end of the structure, next the to thing, the, the south one, is the desert. <laughs> it's one of two of the pyramid structures inside Biosphere 2. Now this desert is really unique, and you think about Biosphere 2 as having tropical or subtropical um, biomes. But the desert is also essentially a tropical or subtropical system because it's designed as a coastal fog desert. So if you were to drive from southern Arizona about two days into northern Mexico, you would begin to encounter a lot of the vegetation that was ultimately incorporated into Biosphere 2's coastal fog desert. So this is a region that is different than the Sonoran Desert. The Sonoran Desert, the desert that's around us here, gets a bimodal precipitation. What I mean by that is we get rain during the winter, we get rain during the summer. These coastal fog deserts only get their rain during the winter. They're very dry during the summer. Now, because of their proximity to the coast, they also get these fog banks and this moisture that moves in, and the plants are especially adapted to take advantage of that during very dry periods. And so this system is extremely unique, has a number of different soil types incorporated into it, and when you look inside, you'll see that there's quite a bit of topography, hills, valleys, um, and so this makes it a truly unique system inside Biosphere 2. If it's not following your head, it's following your yeah. chest. Yeah. I figured I would get up here and kind of look around. A lot of stuff looks dying in here, but I think that's the point. A lot of agave. They must have been tequila drinkers. Leaf pears are being born. Mm -hmm. yeah. Prickly pears. <laughs> Octopus Prickly cactus. down there. Remember the story about the ants? I hope they see. Yeah. See how this footage comes out. Yeah, now at least you have to... Cooler 
in here. This is the one that has the salt water and fresh water, right? The trees that live in the brackish water. These are cherries. Want to eat one? No, I Look at you. You're not playing it. 113 was over there. Uh oh, oh you even missed the desert. I didn't see that number. Here we go. Papaya trees! So we just got out of the biosphere and we were here a couple years ago and uh, they changed the tour maybe because of COVID. Hopefully that's it because it sucked. This was not a great tour. Um, we probably got 5% of the information. We didn't get any of the interesting stories about the people that stayed here during the experiments. Um, we didn't get to see the kitchen or learn anything about how they made food and operated on a daily basis and had fights and all that kind of stuff. Um, they skipped entire things like we didn't get to see the bladders, which was, or the lungs they call them. That was probably the coolest scientific thing to see. It's just enormous and um, you, they bring you through tunnels. You can feel the wind of the of the bladders, that their bladders the create. Atmos the fake atmosphere yeah, they were creating in there. It was just sad kind of that we missed that. And actually, um, the whole tour goes backwards now. Um, last time, somehow we wound around, we went through things the other direction, and we ended up coming out of the, um, the entrance 
and they told this great story about how I think Jane Goodall was here and all this kind of stuff that happened that day and the scientists like smelled um, people and they smelled gross to them because they were away from people for so food long and gross. food tasted gross to them. They had this big pizza party they had planned and none of the scientists liked it because it was like so disgusting tasting to them because um, they had lived for two years and they were craving eating that pizza natural too. foods and it was just so, so, so much better. So yeah. I would have to say the ocean for, part was also closed again. We didn't get to see that at all. Yeah. Um, I'm really sad about that. If people um, are planning to come here, it's a long drive. Kind don't of out come until 2022 because yeah. I don't think they're starting up the real. I would wait until you hear that you can go to the ocean tour again because then, then the you know the tours. whole thing is open and again. And there are three separate types of tours and you have to pay for three separate ones. Yeah, the self-guided one is horrible. This is, yeah. This uh, biosphere experience wasn't quite the experience. Yep.